Welcome back to Brian Knows Movies. It's the end of 2022, which means it's time to recap the year in film. I was putting together a top 10 list of worst movies of 2022. And while putting the list together, I realized we already knew these movies were going to be bad. Do I really want to crap on Morbius and Firestarter and the like for the thousand time. No, I don't. But I do want to have a little bit of therapy moment here and talk about the movies that I was really rooting for, the movies I thought that were going to blow me away, the movies I really wanted to be successful, and they let me down. So without further ado, these are the top 10 most disappointing films of 2022. Start with number 10, Fantastic Beast and the Secrets of Dumbledore. Now, I can already hear everybody in the audience saying, Brian, you should have known better. None of the Fantastic Beast movies have been good so far. Why were you thinking this movie is going to be good at all? And you're right, I should have known better, but the little kid in me, the grown-up in me, wanted to go back to the Wizarding World and have it be successful. And there was so much talent in these movies. You got Eddie Redman. You have Max Milkinson, who's a phenomenal actor and should have been the best bad guy in the series. Jude Law and others. Jessica Williams is even in this. I thought that this movie could be elevated, but the problem is, I hate to say it, it's J.K. Rowling. Outside of her being a transphobe and kind of putting a doubter on the movie, I think that J.K. Rowling just doesn't know how to write a screenplay. She writes books, she doesn't write screenplays. And you can tell in the film that there's just so much things that are missing that would have filled the story out and made it make more sense if connections were made. It looks like Steve Close, who adapted most of the screenplays for the Harry Potter series, did have a little bit of work on this, but but he should have had full reign because these movies just don't make sense. And that's why they continue to disappoint the fans. Number nine, Moonfall. Moonfall should be in the top 10 worst of any list. And it breaks my heart. Roland Emmerich, you break my heart. I want you to succeed so bad. I was really hoping that we're getting back to our Independence Day, the day after tomorrow, 2012. Olympus has fallen. He's given us some great disaster slash special effects bonanzas in the past. I was hoping that it's going to be a return to form for these disaster films that Roland Emmerich is known so well for. Patrick Wilson was in this. Halle Berry was in this. I thought that there was enough talent to make it happen. And the movie's just silly. And not silly in a good way. It had so much potential in the first 30 minutes or so. But it just continues to go downhill with bad character lines, uneven plot. And then once they get to the moon, my goodness, it's just out of control silly. Is this the last time we're going to see Roland Emmerich get this type of budget to make this type of film? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Number eight, Jurassic World Dominion. Yes, yet another movie that I was really gullible about. And this is the last film that in the back of my mind, I knew it was going to be bad, but I was really holding out for hope because the original Jurassic Park franchise's characters were back. It seemed like both worlds were going to collide. We're going to get some really cool special effects with the dinosaurs. There was a really good evil genius behind it all. And it just falls flat because it doesn't seem like any of the old characters really care to be in the film. There are so many leaps of logic you have to take to even piece things together. And the dinosaurs were kind of boring. How do you make dinosaurs boring? Jurassic World, you should have been better. My friends tell me all the time I'm the biggest Chris Pratt apologies that there is but he just seems unengaged as well and Jurassic World I don't know why everybody has this force power with dinosaurs now Chris Pratt had it in the first one now everybody does it with every dinosaur even ones that haven't been trained it's so stupid you should have did better Jurassic World Number seven, 3,000 Years of Longing. Now, this is the first film I really felt like I was sold a rotten bill of goods because the trailer looked exciting. If you, Even though you didn't really know what was going on, you had this genie that was being played by Idris Elba of all people, Mr. Charisma himself. Tilda Swinton can act her butt off out of a paper bag if she needed to. And you had George Miller, who's like a king of action, directing this film. The music score in the trailer was great. There was all these action set pieces. And you get there, and it's the most boring movie possible of the past five years that I've seen. Like, it was very hard staying awake for this film or caring about anything that was happening on the screen at all. Number six, Lightyear. Now, Lightyear is not a bad movie. It's a serviceable film, but when you have Pixar behind the film, that means those expectations go through the roof. And then couple that that is part of the Toy Story universe in some sort of way. We were expecting greatness. We were expecting animated movie of the year. And we didn't get any of those things. The animation was okay. You know, it wasn't anything that was groundbreaking. It was serviceable. I think that Chris Evans did just fine as the voice of Buzz. And I know it's not Tim Allen, but it was fine. But it was so uneven in terms of the themes. I don't know who the audience for this was because I don't think kids will connect to it well. And there are big swaths of it that just seemed like it was just meandering along. It's definitely the worst of the Toy Story universe and one of the worst Pixar films ever made, in my opinion. I know that's harsh, but... 
Yeesh. Number five, Amsterdam. Now we're getting into these movies that were touted as being possible Oscar-worthy performances and Oscar-worthy type of films. And Amsterdam was supposed to be the first of the big films coming out during the fall that was going to be chasing these awards. You had Margot Robbie, you have Christian Bale, you have John David Washington, you have uh, David O. Russell, who's a very respected director. And you get this movie that sanitizes and whitewashes America so much, specifically what it does with race and racism. It's just too simple of a time and we know that that didn't exist. It's hard to connect to the film, especially as a black person, seeing John David Washington's character and Chris Rock's character navigate these spaces in a way that we know even in the North they wouldn't have been able to navigate them. It's just really silly. Even the war stuff for World War II, really silly things. I don't appreciate it. Very disappointed. Sorry, David O. Russell. I love you, but... Uh. Number four, Babylon. Man, <laughs> Margot Robbie's having a really bad year and it's really crazy given that she's had so many highs over the past five years, but two real stinkers of films, I feel like, especially when they're trying to be Oscar films. This movie about these actors trying to transition from the silent film generation to the talkies just doesn't work because it's overstuffed. I do not know why Damien Chazelle couldn't cut this film down at least 45 minutes. We don't need that many orgies. We don't need the drug scene. A lot of this stuff is just excess. I guess kind of like the time was, but it doesn't work as a film. After a while, it's like, oh my God, three hours and nine minutes. You feel every second of this film because it just goes on and on and on. Get to the point. And the last five minutes of this film, the beauty is lost because you're just so worn out from the rest of it. Number three, men. Alex Garland, why did you list this film? This film was perfect. It was scary. It was hitting all the themes that it was supposed to about the horrors of toxic masculinity and it was creepy. It was, it was mysterious. It was well acted. And then the last 15 minutes of the film, you decided to go into these super deep themes that nobody was asking for. The film was working and you completely took all of the steam of the film. Oh, Brian, you didn't understand the themes. Look, one of my favorite films is 2001 A Space Odyssey. I understand heavy thematic movies. It just didn't work in this one. It doesn't work like it did in Alice Garland's other film, Ex Machina and the others. It just doesn't work. And it's so frustrating because the movie was so good all the way into the last 10 minutes. Why? Number two, Thor, Love and Thunder. I liked a lot better than others, but we have to do better Taika Waititi. Everything doesn't have to be a joke. You did so great with Thor Ragnarok. You have so many great films, and but it's starting to become very predictable the type of films you want to make. Sometimes you have to take some things seriously. A killer of gods who kidnaps children, you have to take seriously. Thor, who's dealing with all of this grief and this pain from Ragnarok right all the way up to end game he should be much more serious of a character that's what people wanted that's what people needed that's where the character should progress and instead we regress to get the same old thor who's this lovable goof this lovable oaf this silly jock with no character whatsoever until the end how many different types of journeys for his development does he have to go on huge disappointment and i think it really put a stinker in terms of the importance of phase four and marvel number one don't worry darling i think you guys knew this was coming i absolutely hated this this film because again the way that they promoted this film Olivia Wilde is back after Book Smart which I think is one of the best comedies of the last decade. Her writing partner Katie Sieberman she's working on the film as well. They're going to make magic again especially when you have Florence Pugh and Chris Pine in your film and what do they do? They wet the bed because they jump into a genre that they shouldn't have felt as comfortable making as they did. Sci-fi created this world and consistently every five minutes broke the rules of that that world. It was so annoying as a sci-fi fan. You didn't need that trope to make a movie about incels and toxic masculinity. That subject matter and a thematic element that I think is important, but the way they get to it is just so dumb. Even outside of all the drama that happened on the set, it just doesn't work. This has to be the most disappointing film of the year for really anyone. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy that loves movies. Am I wrong about any of these? Probably so. You probably have your own opinion. I always say all the time, art is subjective. I'm sure that there's films that I talked about that you absolutely adored, and there's probably films that you would put on the list. Let me know all those things in the comment section below. Thank you so much, and I will see you at the theaters next week.